In this video, we're going to write a C++ program to output the Fibonacci sequence. First off, what is the Fibonacci sequence? So the Fibonacci sequence is this sequence of numbers here. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. It's the sequence of numbers defined as follows. The first two numbers in the sequence are going to be 0 and 1. Each additional number in the sequence is going to be the sum of the two prior numbers in the sequence. So for example, this third number in the sequence, 1, is the sum of 0 and 1. This fourth number in the sequence, 2, is the sum of 1 and 1. This fifth number in the sequence, 3, is the sum of 1 and 2. This sixth number in the sequence, 5, is the sum of 2 and 3. And on it goes. We can call each number in the sequence a term. So we could say this is the third term in the sequence, and this here is the 11th term in the sequence. Let's implement a C++ program to generate the sequence. We'll declare variables term1 and term2 to store the two previous terms in the sequence, and we'll initialize them to 0 and 1 because those are the first two terms in the sequence. We'll also declare a variable n. n is going to store the number of terms in the sequence that we're going to generate and we'll prompt the user to ask them how many terms they would like us to generate. We'll also create a variable called next term, and next term is going to store the next term in the sequence. Next, we'll prompt the user to ask them how many terms they would like us to generate. So we'll say C out, and we'll output number of terms, colon. Then we'll store the number the user enters into the variable n. Now we can't really do anything interesting if n is not at least three, because we already know the first two terms in the sequence. They're given to us. So we'll actually check for that. We'll say if n is less than or equal to two, we'll output to the user that number of terms must be greater than or equal to three, followed by an end line, and we'll return one as an error status. Next, we'll output the first two terms in the sequence separated by commas. So we'll have C out, term one, then a comma, then term two, then a comma, and we'll leave it there. And next we'll create a loop with a counter variable that goes from three up until n, the number of terms in the sequence that we wish to generate. So we'll say for int i is equal to three, i is less than or equal to n, i plus plus. And we're starting i off at 3 because we've already output the first two terms in the sequence. And we're going to increment i until it reaches n because n is the number of terms in the sequence that we wish to generate. So the first thing we'll do is add together the prior two terms to get the next term in the sequence. So we'll say next term is equal to term 1 plus term 2. Then we can output this next term. So we'll say c out next term. Now for all the terms except for the last term, we want to output a comma and a space after the term. So we'll check for that. We'll say if i doesn't equal n. In other words, if this is not the last term that's being output, then we'll output a comma and a space after the term. Finally, because we've just actually created a new term, for the next loop iteration, the prior two terms should be updated. We'll update term one to be term two, and we're going to set term two to next term. In order to set the prior two terms to the correct values for the next loop iteration. Lastly, we'll output an end line when we're done outputting the sequence. And then if we save and compile and run our program and enter in, let's say 11 for the number of terms, we'll get a Fibonacci sequence that matches our example here with 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, the same as this one here. So that's how we can output the Fibonacci sequence using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.